Hello everyone, my name is Cheryl Crowley. I teach at Emory University and I'm going to talk a little bit about a project which I'm calling H Hacking Haiku, um, which is a database and blog um, related to the work of haikai poet Tagami Kikusha. Um, the image here is just a photograph of Kikusha's birthplace, which um, is Taski in Yamaguchi Prefecture. She was born in 1753. Her personal name was Michi, um, and she acquired the title Ichijian Kikusha when she started her life as a haikai poet um, in her mid-twenties. She died in Chofu, uh, which is in present-day Shimonoseki, in 1826. Kikusha's most famous verse um, is um, Tsuki yo kasa ni kite asobabaya tabi no sora, or I wish I could journey with the moon as my travel hat and wanderer sky. And as this verse suggests, Kikusha was a poet as well as a traveler. She traveled for about 30 years of her life, um, uh, uh, basically starting when she was in her mid-20s and continuing on until she was quite elderly and um, writing verse in uh, Chinese, verse in Japanese in the form of hoku, um, linked verse, and uh, waka the whole time, as well as being an accomplished koto player, tea ceremony practitioner, and painter. So she was um, kind of a Rep, uh, highly representative of the stereotype, if you will, of a literata uh, this period, um, and she was also a devoted follower of uh, Shinran's teachings of Buddhism. Um, the collection of her work, which is most famous today, is called um, Taori Giku, or Hand-Picked Chrysanthemums, which was compiled in 1812 near the end of her life. Um, it collects hoku linked verse, haiga, which is a um, combination of hoku and paintings, and Sino-Japanese verse, or kanji, uh, which were written and composed over the course of her lifetime. So the first, I mean, this, the, the um, tardigiku, details um, many of her journeys, the first of which was uh, probably the most um, well-known because she, she, the first volume of Taori Giku traces this journey. Uh, in this journey, she follows the route created by Matsuo Basho in Okuno Hosomichi or um, Narrow Road to the Interior and um, she does it more or less backwards. Um, Basho starts in Edo and um, goes counterclockwise through the Japanese landscape, um, following the coasts, as it were. Um, Kikusha goes clockwise, um, starting more or less in Osaka, Kyoto, and going clockwise up the coast and um, pausing in Edo, staying there for quite some time before she journeys back along the Tokaido. So um, Basho is one inspiration for her journey, or one, one, his route is one path that she's following, um, and the path of Shinran uh, during his many journeys, including exile, um, was her other inspiration. 
and um, Shinran is her other inspiration. Basho's route I've shown here in this slide, and you can essentially see um, what he's doing. Shinran's route is um, doesn't uh, isn't quite as comprehensive, um, and it's uh, but at least you get some sense of it. Her route in uh, the first book of Tarigiku is the one that's marked in yellow here, so you can get some sense of of what uh, she's tr she's accomplishing in terms of her travel through geographical space and also through history and um, literature or religious history as well. Taurigiku is was a, is was published um, in a four volume set originally. Um, there's a facsimile reprint that's available today, and um, this is an example here in the in the image. Um, and the majority of the verses in Tarigiku are hoku, the 17 syllable or 17 mora starting verse, which is perhaps the um, most well-known form of haiku, or as it uh, was called during that that um, during Kikusha's era, haikai. And um, perhaps uh, one of if I if I give an example of of one of the hoku in um, Tardigiku, we get a sense of, of the complexity of each of these little verses and how to make sense of them. So um, this verse, Ho on o Omoeba, Karoshi, Yuki no Kasa, um, which I'm translating as gratitude lightens the load, snow on my travel hat, was one of the verses, one of the earlier verses in, in, the, in Tardigiku, which she um, was wrote during her visit to Nishihonganji Temple in Kyoto. Uh, this site is really um, significant for believers of Jodo Shinshu, the um, sect of Buddhism founded by Shinran. And so in order to make sense of this verse, you kind of need to know what the significance of the place is, you need to know where it was, it helps to know, I guess, where it was composed, because every year there's um, a ceremony, ho and ko, or gratitude for the life or the um, teachings of Shinran, which is held at Nishi Honganji Temple. And so this was, was written on that occasion. She timed her, her trip to Kyoto in order to participate in this. And... Um, so uh, the um, season being uh, winter, um, yuki, the, the kigo or seasonal word of, of the verse, that is to say snow, makes sense. Um, kasa, the travel hat worn by um, pilgrims in particular, but pretty much everybody. Um, makes sense too, and um, you know the relationship with with Shinran. So, in other words, this verse is short but full of references. A pilgrimage to a major, major site associated with Shinran, the occasion being this religious festival, um, the specific time of the year indicated by the name of the event and the kiko, and also a relationship with a personal event of. Um, Kikusha's biography, that is to say, you know, this, this inaugural step on her great journey of life. Um, Kasa, as we saw in this, this verse that we, we um, looked at before, being associated with the moon, particularly the moon of Buddhist enlightenment. So all of that has to kind of be unpacked when you read a verse like this. Um, another example also associated with Shinran, uh, something that she wrote during the same journey, um, Kikazaranu kage koso suzushi, suzushi kagami ike. Um, refreshing precisely because it reflects honestly the mirror pond. 
And so, you know, again, that this is packed full of references. This is another site related to Shinran um, in uh, Nawatsu, Kagami ga Ike, uh, the a site where Shinran was supposed to have kind of uh, created an image of himself by looking into the waters here. Um, the season being summer, indicated by suzushi or, or uh, coolness, um, marks roughly the date or the time of year that she visited it. Um, but to know what's going on here, you have to know that this uh, site is, is located near Gochi Kokobunji Temple in uh, now it's a, which is one of the places where where Shinran was exiled to, and so you know she's visiting there to pay homage to Shinran and to um, you know give some sense of of her religious her spiritual progress I guess during during the journey. So it really um, a verse like this uh, has to have a lot of of background for you to to make sense of it. And the footnotes that it would be associated with it are obviously even longer than the translation. So that's one problem, how to make sense of, of each verse in terms of geography, in terms of, of history. Similarly, another verse that's related to her um, journey in a literary context is this verse, Huki Soeru Noki no Ayameya Onsen Nioi, uh, irises in the thatch covered eaves, scent of the hot spring bath. So, this is something that she wrote uh, it at Yamanaka, a place, uh, Onsen, a place with, with famous um, hot spring baths. It's deliberately um, written to recall Basho's verse that he wrote while he was visiting here, Yamanaka ya kiku wa taoranu yu no nioi, or Yamanaka, scent of the bath water without chrysanthemums. Um, Basho visited this place during autumn. Kikusha visits it during midsummer, so her kigo is ayame, or uh, irises. So there's, a, there's an illusion there which creates a contrast, but it also acknowledges that um, Kikusha is doing, you know, going through the same motions as Basho and appreciating it with the same kind of sensitivity. And so the, the verse is marked not only in place, not only in season, but also in literary history. And, um, you know, we have to understand a little bit about the context in order to, to, to make sense of it. And again, a footnote for this would be longer than the translation itself. And while you can appreciate it perhaps without this kind of, of background information, it enriches it considerably to have that background of information. So that's the problem or challenge, so to speak, of translating or transforming a Japanese uh, hokku um, in, for an English-speaking audience. Similarly, another form of verse that is included in Taori Giku is Haikai no Rengo, that is to say, um, linked verse composed by several poets. This is sometimes called Renku or just Renga. Um, and this is even more complicated because it involves collaboration with, with um, a variety of different people. So this first one uh, is an exchange between Sankyo and Kikusha. Sankyo is um, the leader of Kikusha's Haikai faction, the Haikai school that she belonged to, um, the Mino school. And Sankyo became her teacher. So as is typical with linked verse, link, uh, the most honored person writes the, the hoku, or opening verse, of the sequence. This sequence was probably 36 verses long, although we, we have just a fragment here. And I'll go through the first three verses. 
So um, it's typical, it's a kind of a send-off um, occasion, so dew in our eyes, so our, you know, we're crying here as we send you off, chrysanthemum on a mountain road, and Kikusha being the person who's being celebrated in, in this um, occasion of writing the sequence, responds, she's in the second place, your light lingers on me, moon at dawn. So, uh, you know, she, she links with Sankyo's verse, both of them uh, creating a sense of, of mutual respect and appreciation. The third verse is written by a third person, Hyak Chabo. Uh, Your light lingers on me, moon at dawn, of course, is Kikusha's verse, and he links, I'll leave this as an offering of the first crop, so extending the sense of, of autumn and celebration. And in order to kind of make sense of this uh, it, on any level, it helps to know who these people are. Um, as I said, uh, Sankyo is, is uh, Kikusha's teacher. Hyakusha is, um, I'm sorry, Hyakusha Bo is his disciple, his, you know, one of his main disciples, and he is someone who maintained his friendship with Kikusha all of her life, and scattered throughout this text of Taurigiku are verses and verse, um, linked verse sequence fragments that both of them write. And so, it, you know, when you encounter something like this, it really helps to get a sense of the whole. And it's very difficult to do, again, with footnotes. The third kind of text here in... Um, Taurigiku are called haiga, and simply put, this is um, verses and images linked together to create one um, kind of seamless work of art. And in this case, these are verses and images. This is verses that uh, uh, Kikusha wrote while she was traveling on the famous Tokaido or Eastern Sea Road, Eastern Sea Circuit their most famous uh, depictions in art, so to speak, are probably um, Hiroshige's, but it was a popular uh, theme for, for poets and painters or, or you know, visual artists, printmakers to, to depict. And um, a famous one here is Hiroshige's um, opening image of Nihonbashi, which is where the, the road begins in Tokyo or Edo. And you can see in um, Hiroshige's image the warehouses that uh, were a very distinctive um, site at Nihonbashi. And Kikusha's verse at, written at Nihonbashi, Tsuki ni Hana ni Wataru yo Hiroshi Nihonbashi. Under moonlight and blossoms, the world spreads out Nihonbashi Bridge. The image associated with that uh, shows the bridge, shows the, the warehouses, um, and her verse um, talks about this Nihonbashi is a place where a journey begins, a journey through literature, a journey through space, so moonlight and blossoms being a kind of shorthand for uh, Japanese verse in general, which is is preoccupied with um, seasonal imagery. So moonlight, the um, imagery of autumn blossoms, the imagery of spring, and by extension, uh, just natural elements that arise during the whole entire year itself, and then the world is, is the, the um, world of humans, perhaps, or the, the world of, of sites and, and places that, that some traveler on this journey is about to explore. And so all of these kind of come together, and then the image that's matched with it gives you um, kind of a feeling for the, the uh, in a very sketchy way 
the, the site itself. And so it really would, would help to know a little bit about where this is in space and if possible, some kind of, of image, something in, and I'm putting this in kind of quotation marks, more um, realistic, you know, whether it be a photograph, whether it be a, a ukiyo-e, um, a more literal depiction of this image, could really help to picture the scene. Uh, similarly, another example on the Tokaido, um, the place named Kawasaki, and a, a depiction of the bridge there, um, and Kikusha's verse, uh, Kagero ya daishi no fushigi Kawasaki ni, um, Mirage, the wonder of the holy Kukai at Kawasaki. Um, it would help to know the place. It would help to be able to visualize the bridge, which is the only um, image that the Haiga depicts. It would help to know who Kukai is, why it's associated with uh, this holy Kukai, what it what it means to say this Fushigi. Um, and kind of a miracle of, of Kukai. And without it, it's a little bit difficult to understand. Finally, in this collection of verses, we also have a Sino-Japanese verse or kanshi. Um, sometimes these verses are linked with uh, hoku. Sometimes these uh, Verses are dedicated to other people. Sometimes the, the verses are written by other people. Um, Kikusha became quite proficient at, at writing kanji in later years of her life, later journeys, when instead of retracing the journeys of Basho or Shinran, she travels south to Kyushu and um, visits Nagasaki and works with particularly Chinese merchants or poets, um, of whether they're merchants or not, visitors to Japan that she encounters in Nagasaki. And most of the verses that she records in this book of, of Taurigiku is, uh, the, the books are the third or fourth volumes um, most of these are somehow related to relationships that she had with, with other poets. And so making sense of them, making sense of her relationship, tracking these um, relationships, plus the illusions that any of these poems um, present become part of, part of the, the challenge of comprehending them. In this case, departing from monk Senjo, straw sandals, gnarled staff, cold robe of homespun, shadows of traveling geese fall on wild fields, blank clouds gather the light of the shining moon, rivers and lakes for a thousand miles collect in my satchel of poems. And it can help to, you know, uh, understand the illusions that, that to in particular Chinese poems um, that, that this verse makes and can also help us understand the hoku bambutsu no aki o osamete tsuda hitotsu, um, myriad phenomena of autumn all tucked away in a single bag. And, and um, to, to keep track of this verse, um, to present the hoku as a standalone verse, um, it's, it's difficult to get the full sense of, of what's going on. So it really helps to be able to, to link them together somehow and link them with a person or a place. And so um, what the database has here, and you can see sort of the, the, the homepage more or less of it, um, is more or less divided into three major categories of texts people and geographical information. The text includes uh, translations, it includes the 
um, uh, English translation, the j original Japanese, um, the Kigo, and other kinds of information there. Um, there's also space for the people, people who are credited with composing the verse, or people associated with the place, or people associated with, with um, the occasion, and other kinds of things, as well as kind of geographical information there. Um, and so this is a, a, a little indication of what, what uh, the information you can, can see when you, you look up a particular verse. The database is set up with the text of the verse in the original Japanese as the item around which the related data is organized, but of course being a database, any one of these pieces of information can be the center of focus, be it an author, a place name, or a kiko. And, um, you know, this index here gives you some sense of, of what kinds of, of ways that we can set up the database in order to just kind of have a, a basic sense of a particular verse and its, its relationship or its date or um, who wrote it or who's associated with it or the place name um, where it was composed. Um, but as with, with a database, this can, can be modified depending on the needs of, of a researcher at the particular time. And finally, um, being a digital document or a, a digital compilation, it's quite easy to, to um, visualize it in other forms um, that can be displayed online, that can be um, made accessible to, to viewers or readers, uh, such as a um, blog format like this, which um, can display the translation, can display the uh, map of the, of the journey, and any other kind of imagery that, that is useful to, to readers to um, understand or get a, 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 a more nuanced uh, sense of the um, content of the document itself. So um, I hope this is some go some way to um, give you some sense of, of the project itself and um, uh, I'll end it here. Thank you for listening. Okay.